This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. Before we get into today's show, a little apology from last week where I referred to the UAW in the US as the Union of Auto Workers. This was unfortunately incorrect. The official title of the union is the International Union United Automobile Aerospace and Agricultural Implement Workers of America. I'm sorry for not getting that right and I'll do better in the future. Our first story today comes from Tesla, which published its third quarter financials after the close of business on Wednesday. As a reminder, financial figures are listed in US dollars. As we've previously covered, Tesla's quarterly production fell in Q3 to 430,488 vehicles, the lowest quarterly figure this year, but caused in part by production line pauses for line upgrades. For the first time in a long while, Tesla failed to meet Wall Street predictions, missing on both revenue and profit. It's worth noting, though, that much of Tesla's drop in profits come from reduced vehicle output and lower average vehicle prices, as well as a significant drop in Tesla solar deployments, which Tesla blamed on high interest rates and changes to net metering in California. We'll cover more from the earnings call later in the show. General Motors has confirmed that it has pushed back the start of production for the Chevrolet Silverado EV, as well as the GMC Sierra EV, at its Orin production facility in Michigan. Orin currently produces the Chevrolet Bolt EV and Chevrolet Bolt EUV, and it was meant to begin production of both Altium-based EVs this fall. But GM says it's now delaying that facility's transition to EV pickup truck production to, quote, better manage capital investments while aligning with evolving EV demand, end quote. What GM doesn't specifically say is that we are also guessing the ongoing UAW strike plays a part. It's worth noting that GM already makes the Silverado EV work truck at its Factory Zero facility, where the Hummer EV is already made. This means some Silverado EV models will be made at Factory Zero, but just how many is unknown. Ford has issued an official recall for nearly 35,000 Mustang Mark E models to address an issue that could cause the vehicle's high-voltage contactors to fail. According to Ford's official recall notice, which comes at time of a NHTSA investigation, frequent DC fast charging in a short period or repeated wide open pedal events, aka burying the pedal to the floor, can cause the high voltage contactors to overheat, which results in damage to the vehicle's electrical contactors. If these fail, it can result in a loss of power or unexpected behaviour from the vehicle. Ford says the issue affects models made between May 2020 and May 2022 and will work to fix the problem. It will carry out a service program to replace high voltage junction boxes in affected vehicles free of charge under warranty. Regular viewers of this show will know that we're advocates for more affordable and equitable public transportation and personal transportation and we often complain about the average price of new EVs. New data, though, from Kelly Blue Book shows that the average transaction price paid for a new electric vehicle has dropped by nearly $15,000 in the last year in the US. This is great news, but the average price is still above $50,000 US dollars, and much of the price drop appears to be down to two things. Tesla's recent price drops, Tesla accounts for the lion's share of all US EV sales, and a reduction in price gouging across the industry as a whole whole. Does it mean EVs are more affordable yet? No, but at least things are trending in the right direction. As the ongoing UAW strike starts to make its present felt at the big Detroit 3 and dealer inventory of F-150 Lightning pickup trucks rises to record levels, Ford has confirmed it's temporarily halting its third shift at the Rouge production facility where said truck is made. 
Officially, Ford disputes that the 700 temporary layoffs associated with that third shift are related to the UAW strike and instead blames supply chain issues and the need to carry out quality control checks on vehicles produced since it restarted F-150 Lightning production in August. Ford remains positive that its Lightning sales will rise in the fourth quarter, but given that higher-end F-150 Lightnings are pushing $100,000 and interest rates are still super high, I personally would like to see Ford lift its restrictions on entry-level Pro Extended Range sales, which are currently only available to fleet customers. Talking candidly, in Tesla's Q3 earnings call on Wednesday this week, Elon Musk admitted that he's been, quote, overly optimistic, end quote, on the capabilities of Tesla full self-driving. Tesla has repeatedly blasted past timelines set by Musk over when full self-driving would exit beta, what it would be capable of doing, and when Tesla owners would be able to make money from their cars using FSD as the basis for a robo-taxi service. And while there is no longer a firm date set for when FSD will exit beta, Tesla did post a new video highlighting the progress it's made to date this week. The challenges? As some outlets note, the video doesn't show the usual nagging that's present for current beta testers and could lead to misunderstandings over just how the system operates and what it can and can't do. In addition, Tesla was previously found to have misrepresented self-driving capabilities on past videos, leading to some speculation online as to how much a pre-recorded video from the company can be trusted. Kia has announced its official pricing for the 2024 model year EV6 in North America and has introduced two new variants to its lineup. The entry-level EV6 Lite rear-wheel drive with Kia's smaller 58-kilowatt-hour battery pack is priced for the new model year at $42,600 before mandatory fees and any applicable incentives. The two new models, the Lite long-range rear-wheel drive and Lite E all-wheel drive, bring the larger 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack to the entry level light trim level and can be ordered for just under 46 and 50,000 US dollars respectively, again before mandatory fees and applicable incentives. This effectively makes it nearly $3,000 cheaper to get a long range EV6. Cruz announced a new partnership this week with Honda that will see it deploy a fleet of robo-taxis in Japan. Unlike the current fleets in the US, which are primarily made of specially adapted Chevrolet Bolt EVs, the Japanese test fleet will make use of Cruz's custom-built Origin robo-taxi, which themselves are built on top of the same Ultium platform that Honda is using for its Honda Prologue EV. Meanwhile, back in the US, Cruise says that it's updated its vehicle software to better handle emergency situations after an accident involving a fire truck earlier this year. Also, at the same time, the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has confirmed it's opened an official investigation into Cruise to see if it takes appropriate measures to protect pedestrians. During the earnings call on Wednesday, following the release of Tesla's Q3 earnings, Elon Musk made some comments that appeared to spook Wall Street. Musk said that while he thinks Cybertruck is Tesla's, quote, best product ever, end quote, he cautioned that it would, quote, require immense work to reach volume production and be cash flow positive at a price that people can afford, end quote, adding that people should, quote, temper expectations, end quote. This seems to suggest that Cybertruck will sell for far more than the originally promised price, at least initially, and could also suggest that ramp-up will be far slower than hoped. That fact, however, isn't that unusual. Every new electric pickup thus far has proven harder to ramp production up than their respective automakers had hoped. Given that the first deliveries are now confirmed for November 30th, there isn't long to wait to find out. We love reading about new surveys into consumer attitudes towards electric vehicles. And this week, there's a new study to examine. A study from Yahoo Finance and Ipsos, which questioned just over 1,000 US residents about their impressions of EVs. Specifically, the survey asked respondents if they would consider an electric vehicle for their next purchase and, for the purpose of the survey, considered plug-in hybrids as being electric vehicles. The responses? Well... While 11% didn't answer, 57% said some form of no, while only 14% said some form of yes. 
Interestingly, though, 30% of those who did say they'd consider an EV said they'd likely consider a Toyota EV first and foremost, which is kind of funny because Toyota really isn't making that many EVs yet. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are, and you are in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is chock-a-block with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you, and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. While the majority of our coverage of the industry revolves around cars and vehicles with wheels, two, three, four, and sometimes even more wheels, we also love to hear about new electric aircraft right here. And this week, we heard some good news from Jetson One, a company that's been developing a single-seat electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft for several years now. It's just received official approval for use in uncontrolled airspace in Italy, meaning in more remote areas you might soon see one buzzing around. Unlike other eVTOL craft we've seen, the Jetson One is focused on personal air mobility and for now, the permit will only allow test pilots to fly. That said, this phase of testing is integral to help Jetson complete further airworthiness testing to allow it to obtain a more general permission to fly in Italy. And finally, Solar Team Eindhoven, a team of solar car engineers from Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands, are probably one of the best known solar teams in the world. Over the years, we've seen them build some truly impressive vehicles and break equally impressive records, with many former members now employed in important roles within the EV industry. This week, however, the latest members of Solar Team Eindhoven were celebrating a new achievement, completing a 1,000 kilometre trek across across Morocco in Stella Terra, the world's first off-road solar-powered EV. Built by the team using technology that some experts say is decades ahead of the industry, the solar EV has a top speed of up to 90 miles per hour, 145 kilometers per hour, and can travel up to 440 miles, 710 kilometers per day. Well done all, and if you haven't checked out my experience with Aptera Gamma, which I got to drive this week, make sure you do that when we're finished, which is just about now. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to Altero's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'm going to be away next week on a business trip, but you will be in Kate Walton Elliott's more than capable hands for next week's Roundup show. And while I'm at it, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge right here. He's always doing something incredibly fun. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.